What I want to share with you is four reasons why you want to consider a conservative or what we call non-invasive treatment like physical or occupational therapy before you go under the knife or before you go get injections. My name is Rafi Salzer. I'm the owner of Proactive Rehab and Wellness. I'm a licensed occupational therapist and I own a outpatient physical and occupational therapy clinic. A lot of what we do involves treating individuals who have pain ranging from chronic pain that's been with them for years and years all the way to people that have maybe just fallen and injured themselves or experienced some kind of rotator cuff injury when they're reaching up overhead or playing baseball in the backyard, whatever it tends to be. We see a bunch of people that have what we call musculoskeletal problems or musculoskeletal dysfunction. So musculoskeletal dysfunction, basically something going on in the muscle or the skeletal system that's causing them some pain. Now, a lot of times when people get injured, they experience some kind of, maybe it's a, a back pain or a knee pain or shoulder pain. The first thing that goes in their mind is, I need to go get surgery or injections. I need to do something like that in order to make the pain go away. However, what I want to share with you is four reasons why you want to consider a conservative or what we call non-invasive treatment like physical or occupational therapy before you go under the knife or before you go get injections. Now I'm going to link down below to an article which we'll be referencing throughout this video. A lot of randomized controlled trials involving uh, looking at groups that had surgery and groups that had conservative treatment and then following them up for long periods of time to see what the outcomes were in both groups. So comparing surgical groups to non-surgical groups. Let's dive right in. The conclusion of this article, and it's in the Journal of Orthopedic and Sports Physical Therapy, the conclusion says, quote, the low certainty of evidence does not support recommending surgery over non-surgical alternatives for most musculoskeletal conditions with available uh, randomized controlled trials or RCTs. Quite honestly, Research has been supporting non-invasive um, non procedures as a first line of treatment for many, many years. So I don't see this changing anytime soon. Here's a list of four reasons why you should want to choose physical or occupational therapy for a musculoskeletal condition before diving right into surgery or injections. Lower cost, lower risk, high benefit, and then the possibility of avoiding surgery altogether. Let's dive into that first one, lower cost. It is no secret that surgery is expensive, right? You're dealing with hospitals, you're dealing with nurses and anesthesia, and the surgeon has their own fee. It can cost tens of thousands of dollars to have surgery. Physical therapy, on the other hand, if you were to go, even if you were to go two times a week for six weeks, which is a lot, so at 12 visits, at let's say very high deductible or a very high coinsurance, like $50 per visit or something like that, you're still talking $600 out of pocket versus going to surgery where the bill is going to be fifteen, twenty thousand dollars and maybe you have a one thousand or two thousand dollar deductible before your insurance covers any of that. But going to PT first might actually save you some money. Number two, it's lower risk than surgery. Inherently, whenever you put somebody to sleep, whenever you're doing anesthesia, whenever you're cutting somebody open and stitching them back up, which is what surgery does, you're increasing the risk of complications. It might be a complication from anesthesia. Some people get really sick from anesthesia. Some people have difficulty waking up from anesthesia. Depending on how old you are and your age, sometimes anesthesia can be very dangerous, right? Um, not to scare anybody, most procedures are totally fine, right? But it is a risk. The risk of infection and wound care is really what I would be concerned about if I was a young, healthy individual thinking or contemplating surgery is, okay, what are the risks involved with dressing changes and hospital-acquired infections or infections that require some kind of treatment beyond the, the initial injury or the initial surgery? I was talking to a friend of mine. She's a, uh, a professor at the university where I used to teach, and she ended up going to France. She fell. She injured herself. She lacerated her leg. And apparently in France, they, they didn't use any antibiotics during, the, during that procedure and after the procedure, they didn't do any, any, any antibiotics. So what happened was she flew back to the States, going about her daily business, went to her doctor to go get this, the stitches pulled, and the doctor said, hey, you've got an infection. So now on top of already having the, 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 the laceration, having this, the sutures put in place, because there was infection, it increased the, the length of time she was needing to be bandaged and worried about dressing changes and all that by another few weeks, by another several weeks while she finished a course of antibiotics. Now, obviously, falling and cutting yourself, you need to get that stitched up. But it's a perfect example of how something that is very routine can end up involving and requiring longer courses of care because of a, 
an infection that goes untreated or uncaught until later when you go to get the, the sutures pulled. And there have been many times over my career as an occupational therapist seeing folks coming in and out of rotator cuff repairs or total shoulder replacements where somebody goes to get the staples pulled after a total shoulder replacement and then they get told, oh, you have an infection, we're going to have to do something about it. In some extreme cases, I've had patients who have had They've needed to have the, a spacer put in and then IV antibiotics while they're waiting for the infection to heal before they go in and do like a, a total shoulder revision or something like that. Not that that is the norm, obviously. That's, those are the outlying cases. However, it is a risk that you need to be aware of. Number three would be the high benefit. Oftentimes, it can be very beneficial to get PT or OT in order to reduce pain, restore function, improve strength. We tell people all the time in the clinic, Movement is the best pain medication we have. All the research supports that. We're big fans of active treatment here in the clinic. We don't want you to sit down and get massaged for 30 minutes and then go home and then come back in two weeks and you're still feeling pain. We want to get you up. We want to get you moving. We want to help you overcome that pain. And that involves movement and exercise and stretches and activities. Those activities and those treatments in and of themselves have very high benefit. In fact, a lot of the research shows that active treatments like stretches and exercises, things where you, the patient, are doing things with us or we're helping you do things in the clinic, provide better long-term outcomes than passive treatments alone. The last reason you might consider physical therapy or occupational therapy prior to surgery, and in my mind, this one's one of the bigger ones here, is you have the possibility of avoiding surgery altogether, right? When a person gets some form of imaging done, x-rays, MRIs, they might get told something like bone-on-bone -bone knees or something like that. I hate when people get told that because a lot of times it does not really share, really communicate the actual situation going on. Yes, you might have arthritis. Yes, arthritis is real. However, the research does show, and there are, there are instances of people having documented rotator cuff tears, for example. One person has a rotator cuff tear, no pain at all. Another person, rotator cuff tear, exact same rotator cuff injury, except exact same muscle, and they're in excruciating pain. So what does that tell us? That tells us that there's, just because there's something pathophysiologically going on, does not mean that you should ne necessarily experience a whole bunch of pain because of that. Pain is very much a protective mechanism of your brain. I always tell people, like from an evolutionary standpoint, Pain's job is to keep you in the gene pool. It's trying to keep you from injuring yourself further so that you can pass on your genes into the next generation. So sometimes, whether it be an injury that, that didn't heal right or whether it be a neuromotor pattern that just got reinforced, we experience pain even when we shouldn't or we experience more pain than we should because maybe it's our past history. And just because you're experiencing pain and you have an MRI or you have an x-ray that says you have arthritis or you have even a minor rotator cuff tear, there's, there's research out there about exercises, eccentric exercises and loading of the rotator cuff being able to help in healing and reversing small thickness rotator cuff tears, which is pretty exciting when you consider how, one, the risk of surgery, two, the cost of surgery being the big one, and then being able to handle that without taking on the risk, without going under the knife, is just super, super encouraging to me anyways. <laughs> I don't know about you, but if I can do something without going to sleep and getting cut on, I'm happy about that. The last benefit or the last reason to choose occupational physical therapy is simply because you might get to the point where you don't need surgery anymore. In fact, there's been studies that have been published over the years that show that if you take folks that have, let's say everybody in the group has a shoulder injury of some kind, they took these folks and they put them through an eight-week PT and OT treatment program before they uh, offer them surgery again. And after that, the majority of patients ended up, or participants in the study, ended up opting out of surgery. Why did they do that? Well, maybe because they got to the point where they didn't have enough pain to warrant surgery anymore. We want to be able to overcome pain. We want to get back to doing the things we're do we, we love to do. I tell people all the time, it might be throwing the baseball in the backyard with the grandkids. It might be rock climbing. It might be playing volleyball again. Whatever it is, we want to get you to doing those things again at the least amount of cost and risk to you. Obviously, stretches and exercises has a much lower inherent risk than surgery and injections. And if we can handle your pain, get you back to doing those activities you want to do without those risks, then we should absolutely do it. So those are the four reasons why you should pick therapy or consider therapy before uh, scheduling that injection or that surgery with your physician. If you like the video, give us a thumbs up down there subscribe, hit the little bell notification. You'll get notified whenever we drop a new video. And uh, until the next time, be safe, be healthy. I'll talk to you then.